I'm Jerry the Snake Man and today we are doing a snake clip episode about handling venom to snakes. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and um, I've noticed that people, professionals and amateurs, have been making it a lot more risky, a lot more dramatic than it really has to be and it's making it look like venom to snakes are this very risky and, and dangerous encounter when in reality if you watch me as I move the snakes before I clean their enclosures or feed them it's a really a, a, a very simple thing to do it's no more stressful than moving non venom the snakes if you do it properly um, a lot of people are being careless they're making it look like there's some kind of uh, adventurous heroes and in reality again it's not that way um, I love my venom the snakes I move them I handle them in a way that is less stress on them and less stress on me and uh, as you as you'll tell by the videos as you watch the only ones that tend to look a little more dangerous than normal are the cobras they like to huff and puff and flare out and move forward and everything but none of them ever ever try to bite my gloves they're just a bunch of big bluffers most of the time so I think that you know when people are portraying their heroic activities and moving these venomous snakes that they're really giving the reptile community a bad um, name and uh, I wish they really would show the true way of doing things and not the dramatic way. Um, yeah I do educational programs, I do shows and when I take my cobras out at my shows um, I will move my hands around so they'll flare up um, so people can see you know what a cobra looks like while he's flared up and everything um, I do this not to show that I'm a hero or some kind of adventure man or anything like that um, and I tell the audience too um, that you know these guys really aren't trying to hurt me they're just bluffing the majority of the time they're just defending themselves from me um, I've never had one even try to bite at my gloves so please watch this uh, video clip that we have here and I uh, hope you like it have a good day okay today we're gonna take out our large my largest monocled cobra he needs to get his tank cleaned we're not gonna bore you with the actual cleaning of the tank I slide my lid down my screen lid and I have pegboard underneath that I use that as a secondary lid and he's all the way down at the other end now I don't promote free handling and I don't believe wearing these gloves these hex armor gloves is free handling but I do like to have control over the snake. What I try to do is get out as much stuff as possible before I deal with the snake, like his water bowl here. I know he's way down there sleeping, so now I'm probably going to disturb him a little bit once I move his hide. And he's just looking at me, giving me a little bit of a hiss. take his hide out of here. Now what I'm going to try to do is I'll use the stick here, try to hook him, keeping him at bay, move him as close as I can. Now I've never had him bite the glove so I'm going to try to get his tail. As you see he comes forward but he really doesn't touch me. i use the glove as a shield. We're going to reach down slowly and get a hold of him. And again, I've never had him come back and bite the glove. So I want to get close to him with the glove on. We're going to get his tail in here first. If we can, easily and slowly. down in here and just snap the lid shut okay I'm sure you probably can hear him hissing 
down in here and striking at the enclosure side. And again, using my snake stick and my gloves, um, he's quite upset right now. So what I do is I open the lid up, and again use the lid as a shield so I can see where he's at. And I get my snake stick and hold him at bay. And I'm going to use this hand as a shield, slowly manipulating so I can get under his body. As you can see, he doesn't try to bite the actual glove. He strikes just a little bit over the top, never actually trying to bite me. And I never give him enough room to do that. And I pick him up, push the front of his body in, and he will crawl forward. As I said before, this might look a little bit dangerous in using the gloves, but I have never ever had them bite the gloves, the cobras. Um, getting one hand underneath their hood and I'm able to maneuver them. And uh, what I'm going to do, at least in this video clip, is I'm going to show you me actually handling just about all the venom the snakes I have, moving them well, by cleaning their enclosures and feed them. So you can basically see the different techniques that are used. And again, you'll notice that every single cobra, um, I use the same technique, which is to get up underneath his hood as far as possible and never once have any of them even, uh, bitten the glove. So I think that uh, they're big bluffers a lot of times. I do take them very seriously. They could kill me but um, they have shown no signs of being aggressive. Um, they do show signs of being defensive, but again, they're trying really just to uh, intimidate more than they are actually trying to attack me. Now we're going to move my southern copperhead. He's under the paper right here. So first thing I'll do is remove his hide, get as much stuff out of here as possible. Um, he's shedded. You can see his shedding on his water bowl here. Looks like he's shedded in pieces, so hopefully we won't have to help him with anything. But it looks like we're going to. He did a poor shed this time, which is unusual for him. But well, we hooked the center part of his body, and he simply used the glove again to pick him up. As you can see, he has a very poor shed right on top. We're going to help him get that off of there and I'll uh, show you how we're going to do that. So let me put him in the holding container first. Here we have our small cotton mouth or water moccasin. So I've had him since he was a wee little baby. Or her. I've never sexed it. Sexing really doesn't matter much to me unless I'm worried about size of some animals or um, obviously if somebody asks. Now what I'm going to do is, again, this one's not going to ride the hook. So I'm not going to tail it. I'm going to hook it very carefully here. Get my hand down here with the glove. It up, support the back of the body with the stick, and you can see here, nice specimen. He normally has a very docile attitude. We're going to put him over here into the holding container, and very simple and easy. I don't like pinning snakes head down and trying to grab them that way because 
that makes them more aggressive. It stresses them out. This way, as you can see, I'm not stressed out. The stake's not stressed out. Very quick move from one enclosure to the other. Okay, now we're going to be taking out my big black and white spitting cobra. And he just shed. He shed in pieces, but he shed all of it off of him. And with him, I put on my face shield because I don't want to uh, get spit in the face by him, obviously. What I'm going to do now is, again, I like dealing with the top opening enclosures. His hide has two holes drilled in the top, making it very easy to just reach down and take the height off of him, which once I do, he's an ex he will be exposed, and he will be very aggravated. As you see, he's fired up right now. I'm going to take my snake stick, and I'm going to slide it under part of his body. Again, using the gloves, I'm going to grab him, slide my other hand very quickly, up to here, and voila, he's already out. Move him over into the temporary enclosure, and he's all good to go. Very simple, very easy. Like I've said many times, I think people like to make it more dramatic, you know, for the excitement's sake of moving venomous reptiles, but in reality, it's a very simple process. And, um, you know, I do shows too, and I like to have people see snakes that are all, the cobras all flared up and hissing and very exciting and everything. But in reality, they don't have to. You want to make it as least stressful as possible when moving them from one place to another. And here we have our canebrake rattlesnake. We're going to use the hemostats to remove the water bowl and the hide. And there he is. Again, I've had him Here we have my Cambridge rattlesnake And I've had him since he was a little bitty baby also and you can see right now he's a little jumpy. He knows we're coming in. I've already taken out the hide in his water bowl. And then I got interrupted, so I had to put the lid back on. But what I do again with him is I pick him up on the center. I'll get a hold of him. And then I will slowly move him up so I can hold on to his, his upper body. And you can see here he's a beautiful cane break. And we just move him right over into his folding enclosure. And we're all done. Now as you watch this video clip, you're not going to see so far nothing dramatic and spectacular. Um, I'm just showing you the reality of what it is to handle and move venomous snakes. That it's really not this huge drama that people make it out to be. Okay, now I'm going to move my Egyptian Cobra. And he's all ready to go. He's striking at the glass to open his mouth up. 
And I actually like to deal with all my snakes from the top. I know a lot of people like front opening enclosures. I do not like them. Now again, I use my gloves as a shield. So if he comes charging forward, I have a shield to protect me with. And again, with him, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hook him. And then grab him nice and gently. And then slowly pull him into my hands. As you can see, as I do this, he doesn't try to attack me. He does hood up very nicely. Now I can get him to attack me if I want to. But that shows. I'll give him a little more of his headroom here and get him up like that. He gives a nice open mouth display. But he really doesn't want to fight with me too much. Put him in tail first. And release him and once he's in there. Again, they've never tried to come back and bite at me or anything like that. So, I mean, a lot of people do things differently. This is my method of handling moving venom to snakes. I'm very successful with it. feel very comfortable with it. The snakes tend to react very well. Um, none of them actually bite the gloves. Uh, I've been bit twice on the gloves. Uh, uh, over the last few years but um, I feel the gloves are a much better way of moving and handling the snakes than trying to tail them without the gloves trying to use tongs which I do not like but I do own quite a few pairs in case I need them uh, I just think uh, the venomous snakes are not mean and aggressive like a lot of people think they're just not used to being handled and when they do become used to being handled they will settle down quite a bit okay here's a coach whip not a venomous snake but this is what I use to train people to deal with venomous snakes and I have them take him out freehand he's very aggressive but um, if you handle him in the right manner, gently, you can handle venomous, uh, non-venomous fast snakes without getting bit. As you can see here, he's ready to go. He's looking. So what I do is I remove this hand over here carefully, sneaking up very, very slowly. Now watch when I touch him. He's not going to turn back and try to bite me. And I will pick him up nice and slow and I will slide my other hand once I get him up see his mouth gaped there so a lot of people would be afraid but right now we're not going to do that we're just going to make sure he's very well supported like this and because he's supported he doesn't want to try to bite us he feels secure and then we'll move him over into the holding tank which is sometimes only place we have a little trouble because he tries to get out because he is very fast and quick okay this is my other monocle cobra this is a little smaller one um, it's pretty aggressive again put on my gloves I'm a very big hex armor glove type of fan here Take his lid off. He's in his hide. Get my snake snick I just dropped on the floor. Now, again, I like to try to remove things if I can. So we'll get his, get his water bowl out of here. the water bowl out of the way now he's in his hide so as soon as I lift this he should become a little bit active so he's under the newspaper and there he is 
get this newspaper off of him here. And there he is. Again, we're going to hook him. Try to get him up in the air a little bit, get a grip on him. Once I get a grip on him, then I like to lose the stick and go right for handling with the gloves. They seem to react a lot better that way. And I always go in tail first. Make sure he's in here. Slide the lid on. And voila. Okay, now I'm going to take him back out of the holding enclosure here and put him back into his tank. And again, I'm, I feel that if you support them and they don't feel like they're uh, in danger, that they are less likely to want to be aggressive towards you. So I like using the stick. I like getting a good grip on them. Again, I open it up toward me, so I use the lid as a shield temporarily. He's right down here. He's already flared a little bit. I'm going to make sure that he doesn't come and attack me. Here we go. We're going to grab him. As you can see, he's not being overly aggressive here. Okay, and he's a lot more calmer when I'm using two hands supporting him, sliding back into his enclosure, and put the lid on. I could lift him with the stick, kind of make him feel insecure. I could tail him if I had to, but I believe that this way, my way, they feel a lot more secure and they're less likely to thrash around and want to try to strike at me. Okay, and this is a mangrove pit viper. And these guys are kind of a tree oriented snake. They're very fast, only very aggressive. But again, kind of like move his little branches out of the way here. We're simply going to hook him. He's still relatively small. I'm going to try to hook him here, get a hold of his tail. See him coming up. He's a pit viper, so he senses heat. But my gloves are deterring him or hiding my heat signature here and here he is he's a nasty little thing but I love him he's got a little bit of shed on him I need to get off but again you see here he does move around quite fast still again he's not striking the glove but at this size even if he were to strike the glove he would have almost zero chance of penetrating it and we're just going to put him in a holding thing while we take care of his tank. And again, I believe that this is the simplest way. I could have just picked him up with the stick, but then if he were to slip off the stick, he could hit the floor, he could take off on me. Um, so actually holding him with the gloves, controlling him, having a, a little more um, control so that he can't slip through my hands very quickly or fall off the stick very easily um, makes him feel more secure and makes me feel more secure and uh, like I said I've been doing this now for over 33 years dealing with venomous snakes uh, using the gloves I've been using those now I'd say for possibly five six years and I find that the gloves are the easiest safest way of dealing with these snakes that there are
All right, now we're going to be moving my black and white spitting cobra. This is the baby. Um, actually starting to get uh, grow rather fast. Normally I would put on a face shield, but she's very docile. And I do wear glasses, so the glasses will also protect me with my um, baseball cap. So I'm not going to put on the shield, which I probably should, but I'm not. So what we're going to do here, and again, I find it, a lot of people take a lot more time moving snakes than they have to. Um, she's right here. She's very active this morning. She's hungry. Uh, what we're going to do is just slide the stick underneath her. We're going to pick her up and grab a hold of her. And again, I like to use the gloves. She feels secure. I feel secure. And here she is. She's a little cutie pie. If you can see her here, she'll hold still long enough. But as you notice, she has no indication that she wants to bite the glove or be aggressive whatsoever. And then we're just going to take her, put her in the holding container here, while I clean out her enclosure. And now I'm going to try clean the cage here. I'm going to put him back in here. He's very active. He's right up here. Again, not aggressive whatsoever. He's never shown any signs of aggression. Once in a while we'll hood up, but not too often. And I think we can probably, with this guy, I don't know if we can get under him very well, if he's going to come up for us. Here he comes. Comes up. There we go. Up and out. Nice and easy, and we just move him right over here into his enclosure, and very simply done. No stress on him, no stress on me. Okay, and this is one of my baby copperheads, and again. A lot of times I think people make too big of a deal. They take way too long to move snakes. With this guy here, very simple. You hook him. You see, he'll stay right on the hook. He's about ready to go into a shed, so he's all cloudy. But he's right on the hook. I just simply move him over, drop him into his holding tank, and we're done doesn't have to be a big process to move snakes. Here we got our Arizona black rattlesnake. And again, I put one glove on so I can control him if I need to. But what I'm going to do is, because he doesn't ride a stick too well, I'm going to see I'm going to hook him. Today he actually is riding the stick pretty well. Keep this hand available, but I'm just going to pick him up, gently move him over, and put him into the holding container. Now I'm going to tube him because I have to help him eat, I have to assist feed him. And I've watched videos on YouTube of that uh, were 10 minutes long and the title was two being a snake and I thought alright well we're gonna watch what they do with them and literally take them 10 minutes to get the snake into the tube which is actually kind of ridiculous I mean I don't know if they do it for a dramatic effect or what but uh, it doesn't take that long what I'm gonna do is just simply hook the snake pull him up so I can grab him with my gloves here gently and then take the tube and slide it over his head nice and easy here and he usually tries to back out I get him up into the tube somewhat and then I will grab him and the tube just like that take off my glove at this point because he's safely in the tube switching back into my left hand and the snake here is tubed and ready to be assisted fed. 
again I don't know why it would take anybody 10 minutes to do this I think it's just for a dramatic effect to make you think that it's a something that's hard to do and dangerous it's actually very simple to do and um, it should only take you less than a minute or two even with a bigger snake to get him into a tube like this Here I'm going to be moving my Sufan Cobra. He's a larger Cobra, so I'm going to use both gloves. Right now I know he's down in his hide, so I'm going to take out his water bowl. And he's shedded. So as soon as I move this here, this paper, I can see him. See him right here. Take the hide off of him. Wake him up. There he is. I'm going to do the same method that we've done with all the other cobras, even though he's larger. We're simply going to hook body, reach in slowly, get a hold of him here, and then move up on him, pick him up, and you can see here he's got just a little piece of shed stuck on him, but other than that, he's in good shape, we're going to let him slide through our gloves right into his container, and the move is done. Again, less stressful, very quick and easy, and that's what we're looking for when we move snakes, especially venomous snakes, no stress.